we give you glory. We give you glory. Well, again, what a great day to be alive, to be able to worship him, to be able to lift hands, to be able to give him glory. It's good to know him. I thank God for where we are in our journey with him. This has been a great year for us in the Lord. I repeat, this has been a great year for us in the Lord. Talking with a few of our men yesterday morning, and we were sharing how we're not where we were in January in our, in our relationship with God. We can look at ourselves and we can see growth. And we begin even the week as we met yesterday, had our Zoom call with our men, and we wept by, the, by looking at where we were and where we are now and seeing the hand of God operating, working in our lives. What an incredible time. I'm still feeding off of our time together yesterday with the men of B4W because we see the hand, the operation, the work of God in our lives. And when men begin to cry because of the goodness of God, you know things are happening in the earth today. Things are happening in our lives and in our families. Men begin to talk about, God, we thank you for your presence. God, we thank you for your goodness, for the consistency that you have shown us. And we thank you, God, for allowing us to learn how to live uncomfortable and to be comfortable with that. We thank God for his greatness and his leadership in our lives. And I thank him for every P4W, P4W member and our friends who are joining with us this morning. We're on a journey and it's a real journey. And we are making steps towards the presence of God every single day. And God is just showing us his power and his goodness and his strength in our lives. And we are, we are dumb excited about our God. And so we thank him for this first Sunday in the month of December as we look to, as, as God allows to go forth in this month, again, making sure that we are rehearsing what God has taught us throughout this year and intentionally applying the word to our life, faithfully, intentionally training is what we came into this year with that mindset. And that's what we have been doing. And that's what we're going to go out of this year with. Last month, our focus was on prayer. And now our focus is going to be on Thanksgiving. We're going to close this year out training in the area of Thanksgiving. And so I want you to prepare your hearts to hear from God on what it, what it means to be thankful, what that means. And again, as we've done all year, I want us to listen with fresh ears, to hear from our spirit, from our heart, what the spirit of the Lord is saying, not to try to grab what God speaks to us in the natural mind, but hear from your heart. God, what do you want me to hear? What do you want me to learn so that I can apply it to my life? So I want you to hear, especially when we talk about certain words or topics that we say so often that sometimes they, they either lose their meaning or really never had a meaning to us. And, you know, one thing is we talk a lot about prayer, but God taught us some things in prayer last month that I believe we never even saw that, that really uh, just caused us to pivot in the area of prayer. Another thing we often hear is thanks, thanksgiving, thank you, thank you, thank you. And I want us to kind of just settle in on what that means. What is God uh, saying to us in this area of thank you? And what am I really saying when I say thank you? Why, why is it important? And so we want to look at that and again, just adjust our lives and walk in accuracy as it pertains to being thankful. 
So we want to look at this this morning from the book of 1 Thessalonians, uh, chapter number 5, and verse 16 through 18. It's going to be our base scripture to begin this month off in the area of thanksgiving, which we, which we will train in. And I want to, again, lay the foundation uh, this morning on Thanksgiving from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 and verse 18, using as our topic from this chapter as it pertains to Thanksgiving, how does God want me to live? How does God want me to live? Which is a loaded question, a question that I believe is on the heart or should be on the heart at some point in the life of every believer. God, how do you want me to live? Here I am, your child, your son, your daughter, here on the earth, a believer. How do you want me to live on this earth during this time? How do you want me to live? And I want us to use that as our, our key thought or theme, again, according to the scripture in 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. And I want to read this in one, two, uh, three, four different versions. I want to look at this particular verse in four different versions to capture what God is saying here in the area of thanksgiving. So first, New King James Version, beginning in verse 16, he says, rejoice always, pray without ceasing. And then in verse 18, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. In the Message Bible, it reads, be careful no matter what. Excuse me. Be cheerful no matter what. Pray all the time. Thank God no matter what happens. This is the way God wants you who belong to Christ Jesus to live. Again, it says, thank God no matter what happens in the message. King James says, in everything, give thanks. And then in the Amplified Bible, it reads, rejoice always and delight in your faith. Be unceasing and persistent in prayer. In every situation, no matter what the circumstance, be thankful and continually give thanks to God. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. And then last, the easy to read version, always be full of joy and never stop praying. Whatever happens, always be thankful. And here's that sentence, that, that, that question or that statement rather that we started with. This is how God wants you to live in Christ Jesus. So how does God want me to live? Or what is his will for my life? And I want you to pay attention when you look in scripture, when you read the word of God. And anytime you come across a passage of scripture that talks about this is the will of God, make sure you highlight that. Make sure you tattoo that on your brain, on your mind, and in your spirit. Anytime you come across a scripture that says this is the will of God, the will of God, because the will of God is how he wants you to live. It's how he wants me to live. The will of God is what he wants to see in all of our lives. The will of God is what he is looking for. God, how do you want me to live? According to what is your will for my life? And he lays it out here as he gives this word to Paul to give the believers there in Thessalonica. And he writes to them, this is how I want you to live. I want you to what? Rejoice always because joy removes the burden for serving. It removes the burden that, that, that some may have while they're serving God. What joy does, it removes the burden out of service to where I serve him out of joy. And so he says, this is how I want you to live. Rejoice always. Not only that, not only do I want you to rejoice always, I want you to never stop praying. And we just came out of a month talking about prayer. He said, this is my will for your life. Rejoice always because joy takes the burden out of service. I want you to never, ever stop praying. Don't ever stop praying. 
because there is a response from God connected to your prayer. Always. There is a response from God connected to your prayer. Doesn't mean I will see what I want when I pray, but God always responds. And if I stop praying, I cut off a response from God that he wanted to do in my life or in the life of someone else or in this earth. Doesn't mean, again, that I see what I want, but God always responds. And that's why we studied and we, we really rehearsed and looked at last month that God's plan supersedes my prayer, but my prayer is a part of his plan. My prayer doesn't supersede his plan. It submits to the plan of God. But here, the reason why someone will say, well, why should I pray? Why? You know, I don't get what I want. Why should I pray? Because the Bible tells us to pray. That's why. And again, we're limited in our understanding. We won't understand everything until we see him. But we do know this. We must obey the word of God. And if he says never stop praying, then we don't stop praying. So it is the will of God that you and I rejoice. How often? Always that we pray, never stop praying, never stop praying. And then third, this is how God wants me to live. This is the will of God for your life and for mine. And that is to thank God no matter what happens. Thank God no matter what happens. The will of God for your life, for my life. What is God looking for? How does he want me to live? How does he want you to live? He wants you to thank him no matter what happens. If I get what I want, if I don't get what I want, if it happens the way I like, if it doesn't happen the way I like, whatever comes into my life, he says, I want you to thank God no matter what happens. This is not advice. This is not a suggestion. This is how God wants you and I to live. It is the will of God to thank him no matter what happens. And that's what I want you and I to chew on this morning. That's what I want us to chew on for this entire month, that it is the will of God, not the suggestion of God, not, not an option, not, not advice. This is the will of God. This is God's instruction for our life. I want you to thank God to hear the word says, no matter what happens. Amen. And so I want you to look at you and I to look at this again from the will of God through that lens, from that perspective, that to give thanks to him, this is his will. And anything that is his will, it's going to be challenged. If it is his will, it's going to all hell is going to come against whatever the will of God is for our life. The enemy, he has set out to purposely keep you and I from living out the will of God. The last thing he wants to see in your life or in my life is you and I living, practicing, walking in the will of God. He will do everything that he can to keep us from rejoicing always, from praying and from thanking God no matter what happens. So we have to not see when we say thank you, Lord, as just some common words. This is the will of God, and we know the will of God is going to be tested. It's going to be challenged. It's going to be uh, at war even against the enemy. You and I keeping the will of God. You will do everything to keep you from thanking God no matter what happens in your life. He will throw everything at you and I to keep us from thanking God no matter what happens in our life. And so this is what I want to look at three areas this morning on, on why God has set this to be something that falls under his will or in his will. Why is it, why is it the will of God that I thank him no matter what happens? What, what is significant about this that God is looking for in our lives? Because again, if it's his will, it is significant and it is important. So, so number one, it is his will that you and I give him thanks no matter what happens. It is his will because no matter what happens to me, God wants to be my first response no matter what happens to me. God wants you and I to look at him first no matter what happens. And, and get that down first. Write it 
do whatever you have to, but understand this, that, that God's saying, I want you to give me thanks because no matter what happens, because I want to be the first one you go to when something happens in your life, be it good or be it challenging. I want to be the very first response that you do. I want to be the very first one that you go to. I want to be the first one that you acknowledge. So when something in particularly challenging happens in my life, because it's pretty much, it's, it's easy to thank him, you know, sometimes, not all the time, when good things are happening, because sometimes we think it's us, but it's always God when the good things happen. But he, God is, in, God is, this, is using this will of you and I giving him thanks as God is saying, whatever happens in your life, no matter what the circumstance I want to be the very first one you turn to. I want to be that first response. I want to be that first one that, that, that you look at, that you speak to, that you go to. I want to be the first one. Why? Because who you and I turn to first will determine how we journey through whatever challenge we have. It will determine how we handle whatever matter is before us. It will determine how we walk and handle the, 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 the chaos or, or the difficulty that is standing right in front of us. Whoever you turn to first, whatever you do first, that first response is critical because it will determine the course of the journey. And so God is saying, when something happens in your life, particularly when it's challenging and something that is difficult, I want to be the first one you turn to. I must be that one. That's why I want you to do what? Give thanks. Give thanks no matter what happens. I must be the first one you go to. To thank God no matter what happens means don't allow what happens to control your response. That's what God is telling us. He's saying don't, don't allow whatever happens to you, don't allow it to control your response. Your response must be controlled by the word of God that is on the inside of you, not by the event or circumstance that is happening to you. You don't allow that to control your response. You and I, as believers, journeying on into this, this walk of maturity, when something happens to me, difficult, challenging, I must make sure that my first response is to God. I must make sure that I don't allow what happens externally to control my response internally. In other words, you and I, what we have in us is the word. And that word has to be my response. How do we know this? We know it from the example of Jesus when he was in the wilderness. How did he respond to what he was facing with Satan's temptation? by the word internally. He did not allow his external condition of being hungry, of being in the wilderness to control his response. Even in that wilderness, the word of God was what he turned to in order to respond. And that's what you and I must do. We must respond right now to what you are facing and what's coming in your life, to every challenge, you must respond with the word. That's why David said, hide the word in your heart. David said, your word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. I must respond with the word of God. That's why one of our items on our fit sheet was read the word every single day. That is your livelihood. That is your weapon. That is your tool. That is what equips you and I when we are going through that storm, that battle, that difficulty. Use the word he's saying to respond. Don't allow your circumstance. Don't allow what happens to you to control your response. It must come from that word. And that word is in you. It's in you. It's in you. The word of the Lord, it is in you. And you and I use that word to respond. And you use that word and the word of God that's in you and that's in me is to give thanks, to give thanks. When you're hit, give thanks. When you're going to give thanks, when that difficulty happens, what's the first thing you and I do? Give thanks. God, thank you. What? No matter what happens to me, no matter the circumstance, 
God, I give you thanks. I must thank him first, 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 first. I must thank him. Thanking God, no matter what happens, is not what you and I do after we have done a bunch of other responses. Okay, we don't we can't put God on the back burner. We don't we don't do a lot of crazy stuff. And then and then, okay, now let me thank him. No, that's not our journey. Maturity. We are at a place now where I'm not going to do a bunch of craziness and then try to come back and thank him. Because, again, remember, our first response is going to be critical to guide us on how we handle the season of challenge and difficulty and dryness and wilderness in our life. Yeah. That first response, I must give that to God. I must give that to the Lord and not wait until the middle or the end and then try to reach and give him a, a thank you. No, let's do it on the front end. Yes, Thanking God as your first response, hear this, does not mean that you are denying what you are feeling yeah. in that moment. Yeah. Okay, it does not mean I'm denying what I feel because often to give God thanks, we would think we have to feel a certain way. This has nothing to do with what you feel and yeah. what I feel. Yeah. This has to do with obedience. And we'll yeah. get to that in a minute. But I want to make sure that that we don't see this as something that that is that is not uh, a really um, real to do, that we don't see it as something that you know, uh, you're just talking, Pastor. I can't do this. No, what I'm saying is when you give God thanks as your first response, you are not denying what you feel. That is not what you do. You're not faking. You're not pretending. You're not saying what I'm going through is not real. Here, look at Psalms 55 and verse number 17. Very powerful psalm. Here, Psalm 55, verse 17 it says here, evening, morning. And noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Listen to what he's saying. Evening, morning, and noon. That's pretty much all day. He's saying, I cry out where? In distress. Not outside of my distress. I cry out in distress. In other words, David here is not denying what he felt. No, distress is real. Yeah. Anger is real. Yeah confusion is real all of this is, disappointment is real yeah. all of this is very 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 real pain is real yeah. hurt is real yeah. and so i'm not denying that it's not real right. he's saying what I'm, I'm i'm acknowledging that it is real thanking god as a first response to what happens to me is not pretending everything is okay yeah. It's not pretending that I'm not hurt, that I'm not going through, that I'm not feeling pain. And that's really why some of us, we will we will not thank him when I'm going through because we get wrapped up so much into our feelings that we feel that if I thank him, then then I'm, I'm denying the fact that I'm hurt. Right. And other people who look at you, who look at me, when we if we thank God when we're going through something, they'll think, oh, you're just being super spiritual, that that you're not real, that. That, that you're you're denying the real pain. No, we're not denying. We acknowledge. And here the text says, in distress, yes. I cried out. Yes. In this, not outside yes. of it, but in my distress, I cried out. In distress, I thank you, God. Woo. In anger, I thank you, Lord. In pain, I thank you, Lord. How, how do I do this? Because I can do it. Yes. I have the ability to do it. In my confusion, in my disappointment, I thank you, Lord. Why? Because I can. It does not mean I'm denying what I'm going through. It does not mean I'm faking or I'm pretending. No, in my mess, in my hurt, I thank God yeah. because I can thank him. I'm not faking. What am I doing? I'm obeying his word. Yeah. That's all I'm doing yeah. to thank him. I'm just obeying his word word and obedience is not driven by what i feel obedience is driven by my will i choose to obey god when you and i obey it's a choice we do not obey based on what we feel we are based we we, we obey based upon the will of god in my life i'm choosing to obey him so i'm not pretending i'm not faking i'm being obedient and some people, when they watch you and they watch me and we're obeying God and their mind, we're faking and their mind, it's not real. 
in their mind were pretending. In their mind, this is unnatural, the way you're responding to what you're going through, talking about, thank you, Lord. In their mind, it is unnatural. And the truth is, it is unnatural. Then when you're walking in obedience to God, there's nothing natural about obeying God. It is supernatural. It is unnatural obeying God all the time. When you and I do the word, do the word of the Lord, it is unnatural. It is supernatural when we obey God. So when they somebody says what you're doing is unnatural, I say, you're right. It is unnatural that I'm able to hold my peace when I feel like going off. It is unnatural when you lift your hands in worship and you are in pain and you are hurting. It is unnatural when you can sing a song to the Lord when you feel like giving up. It is unnatural when you can give God obedience when you feel like disobeying him. It is unnatural. What is it? It's supernatural. It's supernatural. It's supernatural. And that's what we have to accept. I'm living in a natural world, but I'm walking in an unnatural way. I'm living by the supernatural presence of God because of his presence in my life and on my life. I must walk in a supernatural ability to do the will of God. That's why I always like to tell the story of those two cows in the Bible that the Philistines got together when they took the presence of the Lord which was represented by the Ark of the Covenant, and they stole it from God's people, brought it to their land. But when they brought it to their land, bad things began to happen. They had a statue God called Dagon. And one morning they woke up and his head was off. They set him back up and then his arms were off the next day because the presence of the Lord was there. And then disease began to break out amongst their people and they attributed all this to the presence of the Lord. And they said, we're going to get rid of this ark. And so they got two mother cows who just had babies and they put their babies over like in a, in an area and they locked them up to where they can still see and hear their babies. And, and so they took the mother cows, put uh, some wood on their back, and then they placed the ark of the covenant on the, on the wood. And they said, now we're going to see, we want to make sure that what's happening here is just uh, not a, a normal incident. We're going to make sure what's happening here is because of the presence of God being here and we should not have him. They put the ark on those two mother cows, locked up their babies, and then they hit the mother cows and they began to go. And the Philistines stood back and they said, if they go straight way to Beth Shemesh, then we're going to know that this is a miracle of God and that God is with Israel. And what's happening to us is punishment because we never should have took the presence of the Lord. But if they go to their babies, then we know that this is just a, a, something natural that's happened to us and, and we'll be able to fix it. And so they hit the cows and told them to go. They released them and their babies began to want their mothers. And the mother cows, the Bible says, they began lowing as they went. Lowing meant they were in pain as they looked at their babies and naturally they wanted to go to their babies as any mother would but because of the supernatural presence they were carrying they went straight towards Israel they went straight down the road the bible says and that's what happens when you and I are carrying the supernatural presence of the lord on us we don't do what is natural we do the supernatural we don't lean to our flesh we lean to the spirit we don't disobey god based on our, how we feel we obey him because i'm carrying the supernatural presence of the lord and we go lowing just as those cows lowing meant they were making a pain a noise on the inside of them they went they were going mm. as they were traveling they were mm, with pain on the inside and that's how real it is we don't deny that we're in pain we're lowing but i have to obey god i have to keep his word i have to do the will of god i'm hurting but I'm going to obey God. I'm in pain, but I'm going to obey God. I'm, I'm, I'm missing something in this world, but I'm going to obey God. Why? Because I'm carrying the supernatural presence of the Lord on the inside of me. And that's what happens when you and I obey, when we give thanks, 
we give thanks not because we're pretending I'm not hurting. I'm giving them thanks in my pain because I'm obeying the will and the word of God. And when I'm in distress and I thank God, I don't thank him for what just happened to me because sometimes what's happening to me, I don't understand why it's happening. I don't understand what it is. So I'm not thanking God for what's happening to me. I'm thanking God because I know he's in control of my life. And that's different from trying to thank him for what's happening. I don't understand it right now, but maybe I will later. But at this moment, you may not know what's going on in your life. And so you don't lift up your voice and thank God for what's happening. You thank him because he's in control. You thank him because you know God is at the throne of your life. And it is God who said that, my, uh, that, that I have a plan for your life to prosper you and not to harm you. You thank God because your steps are ordered by the Lord. You thank him for, because he is in control. I want you to feel that chat right now and you put down, God, thank you for being in control of my life. I thank you, Lord, that my steps are ordered. I thank you that you are leading me, God. I thank you that you are with me, God. I don't know why it's happening. I don't know what's happening. All I know is that, God, you are at the head of my life and I'm the tail. You're the, you're the front and I'm in the back. I am following and I am trusting. Trusting God that your control in my life is going to carry me where you need me to be. That's what kept Joseph when Joseph went through everything that he went through after his brothers sold him into slavery, threw him in a pit, the challenges that he went through. And in the end, when his brothers came back to him, Joseph looked at him, them and he said, the evil you meant against me. God meant it for my good. He said this as to say, God, I thank you that you were in control all along in my life. You were in control when I was in the pit. You were in control when my brother sold me, sold me into slavery. You were in control when I went to prison from Potiphar's house, when his wife set me up. You were in control of all this, God. What was meant for evil, you meant it for my good. It's the same situation that Job found himself into. What kept Job was the fact that God was in control of his life after losing, after experiencing loss in one area, family and possessions and cattle. Job stood up and said, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord gives and the Lord has taken away. Blessed, he said, be the name of the Lord. What Job was saying, God, I thank you for being in control of my life. On another occasion, he even told his wife, should we only give him praise when good things happen to us? No, we got to give him thanks even when bad things happen in our life. What kept both Job and what kept Joseph was the fact that God was in control. And so when we thank him, when, we, when we're hit by something difficult, we thank him for being in control of our life. That's number one. Number two, it is his will to give him thanks when we're hit by something because thank you means I trust you. Yeah. I trust you. Yeah. So one, God wants to be the first one you and I call on. He wants us. He wants to be our first response when we're hit by something. And not only that, but God said, it is my will that you Thank me that you give me thanks. It is my will because I want you to trust me. And the words thank you mean I trust you. Look at Mark chapter 6 and verse number 41. It says this in the NIV version, Mark 6 and 41. This is Jesus getting ready to feed the, 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 the people there um, who were followed him and they had no food and nothing to eat. It says taking the five loaves. And the two fish and looking up to heaven, he gave thanks and broke the loaves. Then he gave them to his disciples to distribute to the people. He also divided the two fish among them all before breaking the loaves and seeing a miracle. Jesus, too, Jesus did two very, very important things. Before the miracle took place, before he broke the loaves and the miracle took place, Jesus did two very important things. First of all, the Bible says he looked up. He looked up. You don't want to go past that because looking up is critical. He looked up 
to, to acknowledge that there is an upper realm that you and I are living amongst every day of our life. He looked up to acknowledge there's a realm in this world and in my life that is beyond the natural realm, that is beyond the physical realm, that is beyond the eye level realm, that is beyond my understanding realm. There is another realm and the upper realm is God's realm. It is where, where God resides, the upper realm. It's like, it's like heaven's realm. It's where God resides. And so Jesus, the first thing he does, and all the people looking at him as he had them sit down in companies of 50, because there were over 5,000 men, not in counting the women and children. And Jesus looks up to acknowledge, oh, there is another realm that you and I are living upon, uh, uh, living in. And this realm that we're living in, it is, the, the other realm is God's realm. And he looks up as to say, I am looking up because I need upper realm attention yeah. and upper realm activity yeah. right now. I don't need natural stuff. Not, yeah. Nothing on this level is going to help me right now. Yeah. I'm looking up because I need upper realm activity yeah. Yeah. and upper realm attention. He looks up. Looking up also, it keeps me from what? Giving up. Jesus. Looking up will keep you from giving up. No matter what happens, you have to continue to look up. He looks up. He looks up and looking up, no matter what it looks like, I got to look up. And here in this situation, he has two fish, five loaves of bread, and over 5,000 people to feed. And what does he do? He looks up to say, even though all I have is two fish, and five loaves of bread, I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. I am not giving up. That's God's word to somebody right there. I want you to put that in the chat. I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. And try typing it while you're looking up at the same time. I'm not giving up. I am not. Because when you look up, looking up says, I'm not giving up. There is another realm that I just need to respond to this situation. I need upper realm activity and upper realm attention right now. So Jesus, he looks up. And after he looks up, what does the Bible say? He gives thanks. He looks up. When you look up, your attitude goes up, your fight goes up, your strength yeah. goes up, your faith goes up. When you look up, he looks up and, and, and he says, I'm looking up. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to give thanks. Yeah. I'm going to give thanks. That's what Jesus, the first words out of his mouth it was giving thanks. He gave thanks. Jesus said, thank you, God. He said, thank you. When he looked up, he said, thank you. Thank you did not come after the miracle. Thank you came first. Yeah. Thank you did not come yeah. after all the people were fed. Thank you came first. He said, thank you first. Because thank you up front means, Lord, I trust you. Yeah. That's what thank you up front means. Thank you on the back end is gratitude. Thank you on the front end is trusting. Yeah. And so he says, Lord, I trust right now. I'm giving you thanks. I don't even know what you're going to do, but I thank you, Lord. I'm thanking you what? For the two fish and the five loaves that I have. I don't have in my hand all I need, God. I don't have it right now in my hand. But if I give you thanks, God, I'm going to thank you for the little bit I have and you do what it, whatever you choose to do. And so he gave thanks. And somebody right now, you need to thank him for what you have. You need to thank him. You may not have all that you need, but I guarantee you thank him for what you have. You will please God. If you just thank him for what you have, you will give God pleasure. You will honestly please your Lord. If you just thank him for what you do have, if you need, if you, if you are to have more right now, God will give you more. You have what you need right now in order to function. If you were supposed to be somewhere else, you'd be there right now. Thank him for what you have and thank him for where you are right now. You just lift up your voice and you tell the Lord, thank you. Jesus said, thank you with just two fish and five loaves of bread. He thanked him where up front as to say, Lord, I trust you. And after he thanked him and then God did a miracle. And, it, and, and, and the same type of situation took place at Lazarus tomb when Lazarus died and Jesus showed up. The first thing the Bible says Jesus did right before he, he told Lazarus to come forth. 
Bible says he lifted his eyes. Again, I need upper realm activity. And then he said, Lord, I thank you for hearing me because Jesus knew the power of thank you. Thank you means I trust you. There is another realm you and I have at our access every day of our life. And thank you is what taps us in to that act, to that upper realm, to that other, that other realm, that God realm. It, it was alive with Elijah in the Old Testament. The Bible says when his city was surrounded by the enemy and they wanted to kill Elijah. And it was just Elijah and his servant in the house. And the Bible says that his servant, when he looked out the window and saw all the army, that he panicked and ran to Elijah and said, my master, my master, we are surrounded and we're about to die. And Elijah said, chill, man, chill, because when you when you're living in that, in that and you know that there's another realm, an upper realm, you don't have to panic. Elijah said, I, I, I see the army, but I also see an army that is surrounding them in the heavenly realm there and there's more for us than there are against us that's upper realm stuff that's that another that's that god realm that you and i have access to every day of our life just chill and tell him thank you go ahead and type that chill and tell him thank you that, 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 that you need to do that chill and tell him thank you because i'm living in an upper realm with upper realm attention and with upper realm activity in my life. Jesus went and he said, thank you and saw the miracle happen. And then, and, and I want you to know, and don't get tricked into thinking that thank you guarantees a miracle. No, thank you. It guarantees that God is hearing you. Yeah. Thank you. That's what it guarantees that God knows you trust him. Yeah. And then we trust him to work it out. However he plans to work it out. Then third, the last reason why we go to him and we say thank you. And it is the will of God, Jesus said, to give him thanks no matter what happens, no matter what happens, because it is his will that when you and I thank, say thank you, thank you releases the peace of God in us. Thank you releases the peace of God in us. Philippians chapter four, Verse six and seven, Philippians chapter four, verse six and seven. Here it says, don't worry about anything, but pray and ask God for everything you need. Here it is. Always giving thanks for what you have. Always giving thanks for them two fish and them five loaves. Always giving thanks for what you have. And here it is, because you belong to Christ Jesus, God's peace will stand guard over all your thoughts and feelings. His peace can do this far better than our human mind. He says, give him thanks. What happens when you give him thanks? What happens? God's peace will stand guard. You give him thanks always. And God's peace will stand guard over your thoughts and your feelings. So when you and I say thank you, to God as our first response to God. When we're going through our first response to say thank you. When you and I say thank you to God, his first response is to release peace. His peace. His, and my God, we need his yes, peace. Lord. I need his peace. Yes. You need his peace. And when I say thank you, God, peace is released in my life. The peace of God is, is unlocked on the inside of you. And what does peace do? According to the text, it stands guard over your thoughts and your feelings. That's what the peace of God will do. It will stand guard. God said, I, I, I want to give you peace because the peace that I give you will stand guard over your thoughts and your feelings. Peace keeps out bitterness and unforgiveness and revenge and evil intentions. Peace will keep it out. To keep out means it will not allow those negative feelings and those negative thoughts to remain on the inside. They'll come, but peace will kick them out. Peace will remove them. That's why you and I need the peace of God. When something painful happens to us, painful and harmful and negative thoughts try to come on the inside, they will attempt to control our mind 
And if the peace of God is not in you and not in me, then those thoughts will succeed. They will, they will, they will sow seeds and they will grow negative, harmful, and painful thoughts. You and I must keep them out. And the only way we can keep them out is by the peace of God. That's what his peace will do. He says, my peace will guard. It will guard. It will stand in front and it will remove thoughts that are that are harmful, painful, uh, thoughts that are negative. Peace won't let them settle in and stay within us. Peace guards you and I. It will guard us from what? From becoming a victim. Peace will peace will, will, will keep you from feeling sorry for yourself and becoming a victim. The peace of God won't let that happen to you. The peace of God, it will, it won't let you reach for coping mechanisms in order to get through a difficult season. No, the peace of God will guard you from all that. It works twofold. On one hand, the peace of God is guarding and keeping out stuff you don't need. And at the other hand, it is increasing what I do need, the yes. trust, the love, yes. the forgiveness. You, That's what I do need. And peace will increase that while keeping the other stuff out. Thank peace you. will guard, your, guard you from thoughts that do not make you strong. Yes. And peace changes things inside you. And when things change inside you, things change around you. That's the power of the peace of God working in us. And the power of peace that I want you and I to, to grab a hold of right now, uh, where we want to experience it, is, is, is found in this last chapter, which I know is, is your favorite chapter, excuse me, your favorite verse in the Bible. I know this is your favorite verse in the Bible, and that's Luke 6 and 28. I know this. I know I can hear your heart. You're telling me that this is my favorite verse in the Bible. In Luke 6 and 28, it says, bless those who curse you and pray for those who don't just use you, but who spitefully use you. And I know that's your favorite verse. That's why you know, I had to bring this one in. And this is a great place to experience God's peace, to see it working, because the word bless, it means to thank. That's what that word bless there means. It means to thank. It is to say, God, I thank you for. And then you put that person's name there who spitefully used you. That person who cursed you. That person who just did you horribly wrong. Who caused you pain. Who caused you anger. What you do because, you know, you're that mature believer. You're, you know, that's you. What you, what you do, because this is your favorite verse, what you do, because you want to practice the peace of God, what you do is you say, Lord, I thank you for that person. And I pray that you will prosper them in you. Get it in you. Get it in you. I'm having some resistance in here in my, my audience, but, you know, to take, you know it's going to come. It's going to come. It's going to come. What you do is, according to the word, you, right there, the word, the word, the word, what you do is, God, I thank you. Four, that, boom, you put their name there, and I pray that you will prosper them in you, Lord, in you. Prosper them in you. That means, God, you do a change on the inside of their life. Build them in your character. Build them in your likeness, God. Build them in you. And what happens is when you do that, the peace of God, it will just work on the inside of you to remove any anger and bitterness and hatred it will remove, it will break that stuff up. The minute you thank God for them, the peace of God begins to go to work on the inside of you and you feel lighter. It's not this burden that you are carrying any longer. And peace creates a bridge for, reconcil for reconciliation to happen if possible. If it, if it, you know, if that, if that comes back, if that relationship comes back in that manner, and you know, sometimes they don't because not on your end, it could be on the other person end. but your end is to thank God for them, pray that God will prosper them in him. And then you have just created a bridge of peace for reconciliation to happen. Amen. And I want you to do that right now, right now. Right now, right now, right this minute. I, I want you because if we were we were together and we were all in this place, I'd have you right now to lift your hands and you begin to thank God for that person. 
and you put their name there and you thank God. And then I'll tell you to say, now, Lord, I pray that they will prosper in you and the peace of the Lord will just begin to just be released and unleashed in your heart and in your mind and in your spirit. And God will be smiling upon you because what are you doing? His will. You're doing his will. I know God gave us this attribute of Christ this thank you to train in this last month because we have been journeying from January to now and we have been maturing and we've been, because you have to mature I mean, you have to be mature in order for thank you, God, to be your first response, no matter what happens to you. You have to be mature. Yes, and for whatever is coming, God is requiring you and I to live in this place of thanksgiving. There's something ahead of you there's something ahead of me. There's something ahead of P4W that God is saying, as you close out this year, I need you to lock yourself and anchor in the place of thanksgiving. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you. Thank you.